and gentlemen, welcome to Coach Lyons Court here at Winterfield House in Belmont, Massachusetts for tonight's Division II North 2020 MIAA Boys Basketball Tournament Action. I'm Coach Jan Kuman, joining the box as always by the inestimable Coach Josh Streit as we're here for the matchup between the visiting Reading Rockets and your Belmont Marauders. Coach, back in the saddle once again for some tourney basketball. Feels good to be back. Life of the uh, bands back together, so to speak. And as we uh, look on to the beginning of this matchup, we have kind of a tale of two games here where uh, at Reading, the first time these two schools met, Belmont's offense did not show up. Their defense did. Belmont squeaked out a 45-44 victory. But last time, January 3rd, on this court, 80-42 Belmont with a balanced attack, six players in double digits. That's going to be key to tonight's game. Balls Balance up. and speed. Balls up for the tip. Logan tips it over to Preston Jackson Stevens. And Nuruzi will control. Over to Preston. PJS to Mac Annis. Automacus to start it for three. Well, you gotta be good. You, you gotta be going to get basically as soon as he crosses half court and definitely from that range. That's a layup for him. Belmont pressing early here as Redding looking to beat the press. Preston Jackson Stevens pressures DeRoss. Ball's knocked away, but it should stay Rocket basketball. You're going to see a lot of pressure here tonight. You're going to see a lot of speed. One of the things that was kind of said after the first meeting is they were a little sluggish and slow. Belmont likes to get speed and get out quickly. Here's Marchant now controlling for the Rockets. Naruzzi picking him up. Picks up the dribble up top to Dean. Dean off to the wing to Sahagian. A little pull-up jumper. Rattles around the rim. Can't find the mark. Kevin Logan up with it. Belmont moving with pace now. Preston from deep. Can't connect off the back iron. Crashing is Naruzzi. Preston tries to come up with it. Knocks it off of a rocket, and it's going to be Reading basketball. Well, it's actually staying. Belmont, he got that in time. Excuse me. And what's amazing is you've just seen the speed of Belmont. They're all over the court. Good look inside there to Naruzzi by Jackson. Stevens feeds it back to him for three shots short. Reading up with it. DeRoss now over to Marchant. Marchant, one of the captains for the Rockets. DeRoss the other. Jackson Stevens picking him up, using the screen. Finds it down in the corner. Shots up, no good. Naruzzi with the board. Belmont will push the pace. Jackson Stevens right to the rack, has it knocked away. Belmont basketball. Jackson Stevens has been everywhere in this first minute, just going like side to side, up and down. He's been everywhere. His speed is athleticism. Um, his length on full display right now. Full athlete there, nice inbound there. Minikazi can't come up with it. Fouls called. That's gonna go on Dean, his first personal foul. Naruzzi will inbound from underneath the basket. Preston Jackson Stevens definitely been a player to watch along with Mac Annis, who is the Middlesex Liberty MVP, as Chet Messer informed us. And Tim Minicosi round out three Belmont All-Stars on the Liberty Division team. Naruzzi up top. Over to Annis. Annis looking for flashers. Minicosi to Jackson. Stevens uses the Logan screen. Takes it to the hole. Kicks it over to Logan for three. And it's oh. good. Kevin Logan has his good called up. And now starting gives them such a, a added dimension of size. Um, down low, but also obviously versatility on the three, just that. Great hands there by Naruzzi, dishes it off to Preston Jackson. Stevens, he'll be checked from behind by Marshawn as he's going to the basket. Second team foul for the Rockets. And you're seeing a total balance attack now. You have Mac on the first three, Kevin Logan just had a three, but they're attacking with Preston, they're attacking. They'll attack from inside, they'll attack on the drive, and they'll shoot a lot of three balls tonight. All the way back up top is Marozzi. Minikazi uncontested and one. Strong take there by Minikazi. Puts it in the right hand, takes the hip check and converts, so he'll go to the line. Eight nothing Belmont early here with a chance to make it nine. Use his body perfectly there to deflect, the, to, to have the defender deflect it away. Finish with a strong hand, just a nice easy kiss off the glass. Great take by uh, Minikazi there. That's going to be the second foul for Alex Dean as he'll step out. Senior guard takes an early seat with 5.54 remaining in the first. 
Belmont continues with the press. It's Marchant. Marchant over to DeRoss. He carries it across. Sees a little space, kicks it down low to the block. They go to the floor, trying to dish it out. It was kicked around. Naruzzi up with it. Dishes to Minikazi. He'll pull it back. Hands it off to Naruzzi. Belmont will settle here. 5.30 remaining in the first quarter. Crowd's getting into it. Annis to Logan up top. Naruzzi now in the motion offense. Has it knocked away. DeRoss up with it. Redding will come back, still looking for its first points of the night. Marchant, Naruzzi on him. Strong take with the right hand. He's up with it. It falls. 9-2. Nice take there by senior captain Tyler Marchant. Minikazi uses the Logan, pick and roll. Logan inside on the block, fadeaway jumper, a little bit short, DeRoss up with it. Knocked away by Minikazi, Logan up with it, tips it over to Preston. Jackson Stevens with a dime to Minikazi. And what was so amazing on that is, is Minikazi flashed open early and uh, Preston Jackson Stevens took his time, made sure the window was there, gave a nice bounce. Well, the bounce pass is always what gets you there. It's just like and lacrosse. It's all about the bounce. It's timing, man. It's all timing and everything. Got to put that bounce shot in there. You got to put that bounce pass in there. I know Coach Pritchard was talking a little bit um, over the course of the season about how this is just a Belmont team that's had to, had to be a complete team. You know, and, and had to rely on a lot of different people at a lot of different times throughout the course of the season in order to get to where they are. You know, they sit right now with a 16 and four record, three in the bracket. You know, and, and that's a little bit different from some of the Belmont teams we've seen in the past where we've had, you know, dominant individual players. Well, you graduated your all time leading scorer last year. He's in the house right in front he of sure us, is. Danny Ardimian. But, and the, Play. I mean, Mac Annis is a thousand point scorer. I mean, a tremendous talent. Um, we watched him set the, uh, you got the uh, USA Today last yeah, year for the yeah. play of record 15 threes. Hey, we so called that game. Yeah. But they have so many weapons and they have so many, they have ability to hurt you from so many different places. Is it on the press? Is it on the drive? The three pointer? It's a balanced attack. And the last time these two played here, six players were in double figures for uh, Belmont. And that again was. Chet Messer with the stat provision for us before the game. Chet's been here every single Belmont boys basketball game this year, and we really appreciate him giving us the pegs tonight so that Coach and I can call the game. 11-2 with 4.27 remaining as Annis puts it back up top to Minikazi. Minikazi to Nurizi. There's Annis for three. Automacus, it's good. That was even closer to the last one. It's like, what? You fall asleep for one second, Mac gets a step open, and he's gonna hit that shot every time. Just so you guys know, we have an unnumbered player on the floor for Redding as Marchant takes it to the hoop and one. That's number 20, not on the roster. So we forgive him, or for, uh, please beg forgiveness from, from him and his parents as we call him number 20. I assume he's a guard. If we, if we had his name, we would we would say it. So Marshawn at the line trying to reduce it to a single digit lead with 404. Belmont crowd saying hello. Not phased is Marshawn, 14 5 the score. Nurizi coming back now. He'll slow it down. Calling signals from the top. Minikazi to Annis. Back to Minikazi. Thinks about the drive, has to pick up the dribble. Logan now. Good ball movement. Coach Pritchard up calling signals. Seven on the shot clock. Look inside. A little early leap there by Kevin Logan. Can't come up with it. Just missed time that jump. Really nice play. A really nice roll by Kevin Logan. And, and Mac Ennis was very patient with that right there. Had everyone fooled. Thought we were shooting. Really nice pass. But again, young man just timed it a little too early. Belmont will pull off the full court press here. He'll pick Marshawn up as he crosses the half. There's a trap play up top, and Stevens up with it. Jackson Stevens now has Annis' little dish. It's up and oh, easy. chemistry coach. Woo. He didn't even look. He knew Mac was there the whole time. Went straight, didn't even look in his direction. Perfect play. By Those Beattie. two are playing good basketball on this aggressive trap set. Was doing a little bit of work, but Minikazi's going to come up with the foul. First for him, first team foul for Belmont. What I'm noticing early is this defense, whether it's a full court or if it's a half court trap, 
they're making Redding have to react really quickly. You're seeing a lot of bad passes by Redding early on. You're seeing them four shots get to spots they don't want to be because this is hounding defense. Even if they don't get a turnover, they're still doing themselves a huge service here. Here's Marshant now. And nice little runner there by Tim Sahagian. 16-7. Quick up the floor, Minikazi down low. He's going to get doubled and tied up. That's a jump ball. Possession arrow says Redding. Checking into the game now for the Rockets. Going to be number 10, Jacob Carter, sophomore guard. Logan will head to the floor for Belmont, and we'll see Shapazian and Arno as Nuruzi takes a seat. Excuse me, Nuruzi takes a seat as well. Marshant now. Carter, long pass inside to DeRoss. Good little shoulder there. Finds some space. Fundamental basketball. Kevin Logan's out of the game. They go down low immediately. That'll be something interesting to watch, uh, see how much time Kevin sits out here. It's a big ask. move by Coach Pritchard to put the big man down low. That was a late season adjustment to the starting lineup. Annis flips to Minikazi. There's Preston Jackson on the, Preston Jackson Stevens on the flash. Minik excuse me, Annis for three. Just misses, misses off the back iron. Got to get my tongue back here a little Too bit. great, Coach. You know, Number 23, Tommy Carter there. Unbelievable defense on Preston Jackson Stevens on that, uh, that back screen flash he had. He stayed with him the whole time. Fool me, I thought he was going to get free, to be honest. Marshawn losing the handle there. Minikazi ties him up. Jump ball sends it back to Belmont. Possession arrow will flip. 149 remaining here in the first quarter. 16-9 the score, favoring the Marauders. PJS walks it up the floor. Left-handed dribble around the double screen high. Mac Annis jumps back. Shapazian inside to Minikazi. Trying to throw the big body. Has it knocked away? No foul. Marshawn pushing, but Belmont's back. Good defense there. They're going to call PJS out of bounds on the baseline. Rocket basketball. And uh, PJS there had an, almost an unbelievable play. He knew it was going to land out of bounds. Tried to spike it off of um, Tommy Carter's head. Did not pull it off successfully, but a really athletic play by him. Preston Jackson Stevens, a great athlete all around. Runs track in the spring. Was a wide receiver for the Belmont football team in the fall. Going to be a team captain next year as a senior. I think we'll likely see that here on the basketball floor as well. Here's Carter, good look inside to Marchant, has it knocked away by Shapazi and gets it back and finishes 16-11. Redding has shrank the Belmont lead to five. I'm liking the scrappiness I'm seeing a lot from uh, Marchant here, who's really, really going after it, afraid of no one, attacking the basket, attacking the rim, getting some real nice scrappy points. That shot by Annis is off the back iron there a little long. As Unnamed guard number 20 comes up with it. Marshant now will jog it across. Under 45 seconds we go. Belmont is guaranteed another possession coming back, even if the shot clock runs low. Marshant, pull up jumper, no good. Tipped away by Shapazian to Annis. Annis to Preston Jackson Stevens. Little crossover dribble, loses the handle, Redding up with it. Here's Tommy Carter. To DeRoss, DeRoss working on Arno. Marchant now up top. Arno picks him up. Is Belmont looking to play a little zone here perhaps? Great defense recovery wise by PJS to get inside. Four on the clock, minikazi has got to push it, has it knocked away by Jacob Carter. And with 0.2 on the seconds, Belmont will get a side out. I love Pritchard calling a play here. Point two, I do not see them getting this off, but why not? You never know. There it is, he's gonna have to push it to the hoop, and even Mac Annis can't find a mark on that one. That would have been incredible. So a blustery start by the Belmont Marauders to begin the quarter, had him out to a 10-point lead. Redding battles back in the last two or three minutes there to make it a 16 to 11 game. I got the feeling this is gonna be a little bit of a scrap fest as we move forward into the second quarter. So Bell, uh, Redding started attacking down low as soon as Kevin Logan went out and seemed to get a couple baskets that way. 
Another thing is Belmont Stevens still been very strong. Uh, the first game they let up 44 points, second game 42. They're on pace to give up 44 again. So Belmont could just get a 45 points. It's Bel Reading hasn't seen north of 44 this season. That'll be good for them. And it, it does seem like the pressure's getting to Reading. It does seem that they're, they're kind of, Belmont's all over the court tonight. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, Reading's been scrappy for sure, been feisty for sure, and they've been battling back in this. It's when you, the last time you get blown out, if the other team starts getting 10 point, 12 point, it can be, things could creep in your head that maybe yep. this is gonna happen again, but they've fought back. So let's see what the second quarter in stores for us. And this is a Belmont team that, that wants to run. So I Definitely. think it would really behoove Reading, and I'm sure they're trying to do it, to, to slow pace down and play set half court basketball, because that's not what this Belmont team really wants to do. No, they and they say they want to be all over the court. They want to force you into making bad and rush decisions. Preston Jackson Stevens rebounds the rocket shot. There's Mac Annis. Nifty move there by Mac, tries to put it inside. Foul called, I believe, on the floor. Jacob Carter, Jacob, Jacob Carter is number 20. They have him listed as 10. That's the error there. Excuse me. No, number 10 got the foul. That's Jacob Carter. We will we will get this sorted nope, out. Nope, number after. 20 is Pat Harrigan. Nope, checking in with Pat Harrigan. This is a mess. Arno off the press of Jackson Stevens. Jackson Stevens That's a reverse connection there, because Arno, of course, the quarterback in the fall. PJS, the wide receiver, flipped it around right there. Nice dime by Presto. They still have a chemistry, regardless of who's on the receiving end. Good look inside there to Harrigan as he converts 18-13. Belmont continuing to push the pace. Minikazi working quickly. Looking back up top to Annis, nothing there. Arno gives Minikazi back the dribble. Shapazian now. Shapazian guarded by Harrigan. Minikazi's gonna get called for the travel there on the head fake. That was very close. It's a tough call, Coach Pritch doesn't like it. Gave a little head shake and a smirk there. But not one to harp on the officials too much as Coach Adam Pritchett, he kinda just moves on. He's seen it all, seen he it enough times. That's not always what you get from basketball guys. They're usually right in the ear. Redding working here, chasing a five point Belmont lead. He's Marchant. Marchant's been picked up by Joe Carey back in the game. Long three point shot from Jacob Carter, rebounded by Shapazian to Presto, to Logan, back to PJS. Chapazian now, right to the hole he goes. Great defense inside by Redding. Little momentum here for the Rockets as Marchant sprints across half court, then slows. Harrigan, over to Carter, comma, Jacob. Takes the baseline, he's gonna get checked a little bit on the floor by Joe Carey. What's interesting now about the Belmont defense is they're switching on everything. You had Joe Carey guarding Marchant, last possession. This possession, Shapazian started on him, but as soon as the screen came, PJS went to him. And they, I mean, what's great about offensively, everyone can score defensively, everyone can, can play, everyone can play on ball defense, and you're gonna see a lot of switching tonight. Kevin Logan takes the hole away. Preston, great job. Carry up with it, checked as he crosses half court, and that's gonna be a foul on the floor. So at least we're seeing a little bit consistency there on that body to body contact. And again, that caused by just swarming. When the defense is all moving around and, and you never really know where it's coming from, if you're active on defense, just running by to, to stay with your man or to switch your man, maybe you get a hand in there, and that's what we saw in that last possession. Sahagian is checked back into the game for Redding. Belmont crowd imploring their marauders as Belmont has scored only two points in the first two minutes and 15 seconds of this quarter. Good news is, so is Redding. Joe Carey, no relation to Harry Carey. Minikazi. Nice take there by oh, Minikazi. Patience, very patient there. Levitating in the air is Timmy. In a close finish, he held that ball close the whole time. 
and put it up just at the last second to avoid being blocked. Good look inside there by Sahagian. But again, the swarm fest by Belmont. Joe Carey was way away from that play, came flying back in to defend that. Hey, get I called that on Kevin. Yeah. I actually, to be honest, I thought that was on Carey. They're gonna get the second on Logan. Carey's gonna come out. That's the fourth team foul for Belmont. Naruzzi back into the game. Redding working now. Alex Dean trying to take Annis down low. Nice dish there to DeRoss, and he finishes. Well, really nice play by DeRoss getting to space as soon as Minicosi turned his back. It was a great bounce pass there, an easy finish uh, by DeRoss. That was good patient ball control by Redding. Minikazi thinks about the shot, then gives it to Logan down low. He's got the height advantage, can't finish off the glass. Redding up with it. Belmont's lead at five. Four minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Pat Harrigan to Sahagian, inside to Marshawn. Little turn there, can't hit the mark. DeRoss swats it away to the top. Alex Dean for three, can't hit. Chapazian up with it for the Marauders. It's been great on the defensive glass tonight so far. Mac Annis for three, and it's good. Just like that, it's an eight-point lead for Belmont as Automacus adds his third three of the game. A nice natural screen there and a great shot and finish by Mac. Alex Dean to the block. Can't finish. Minikazi. Almost a double dribble there, but he saves it. Automacus over to Chapazian. Belmont will settle. 23-15 as Minikazi head fakes. Now he's got to pass it off. Lost the dribble. Good look oh, inside the Mac. How did he see that? That is unbelievable. The vision there, as we definitely see that team chemistry that you were talking about, Coach. That was a beautiful feat. In the patience there by Minikazi. Lost his dribble. In the paint, you need to get rid of that ball very quickly, but he, Elvis Tommen he knew that if he was just patient, that somebody would free up. They, they have faith in each other, they trust each other, they don't panic right now. The other thing that's happening that's nice is that the defense on Marshawn specifically, especially in the paint, has been very strong. He hasn't been scoring, he hasn't scored at all in the second quarter, um, and he was having a lot of success at the end of the first quarter. Good defensive adjustment there. I think one of the things that, that strikes me too about this Belmont team is just there's this, this very calm and level sense to them, you know? So even coming, you know, Red and coming back, five points, no panic. This is a team that knows it can score punches and bunches, you know, and, and they just kind of keep running their game, being smart basketball players, and they're able to find their way back to a 10-point lead. And with Kevin starting the last couple games, it, that means that someone who's been starting all season, Tyler Shabazian, Ivriono started a couple games. They're, they come off the bench and they have, you know, this leadership quality. They yeah. have the experience, the veteran presence. They've started games before. And they they add this depth to the, to the roster that most teams don't have. It's huge. Sahagian has it swatted away. PJS up with it. He's looking to push. Good collapse there by Redding in the paint. Forces him back out. Minikazi, the press done. Three minutes, 13 seconds. Arno screen gives PJS the three. Silky smooth. And just like that, you think he's driving, you're backing off, and he just steps back and daggers. One of the most complete basketball players I think that Belmont's seen. PJS can do it all. Here's Marshawn. Good look inside to DeRoss, bumped by Preston. Battle for the rebound down low. Redding up with it, Arno picks it up. Everything contested here by Belmont, everything contested. Not wasting any time as Presto finds Minikazi wide open, can't hit off the back iron. Marshawn up with it for the Rockets. He's moving with speed. Here's Alex Dean for three, he can't hit. Arno with the board. Naruzzi coming back. Rock'em, sock'em robots here late in the second quarter and Mac Annis draws the contact, he'll go to the line. You know, Redding shot that ball within five seconds of the shot clock, and you don't want to do that against Belmont. Belmont wants to run, gets in space. 
We had a five point lead a minute ago, and right now we're at a 13 point lead, and Belmont can do it to you just like that. It almost feels like they came out of the timeout saying, let's try to beat them at their own game a little bit. And, and I really, I agree with you, Coach. I, I don't think that is the game to play uh, against this Belmont Marauder team. Well, if you, if Belmont's patient, they're experienced. They know exactly where to be. And if you're trying to force them into bad decisions, they won't do that. And on the other hand, they're gonna force you into making bad decisions and fast decisions. 29-15, coming up on two minutes. Here's Marshawn. Dean slips, ball goes out of bounds. But that pass went high. I mean, Dean slipped, but for Preston Jackson Stevens knocked that right away, and that was part of the deflection of that. That pass probably wasn't gonna go to that target. And, you know, again, reaching around quickly, getting, uh, recovering on defense. Hands everywhere, it's, it's paramount to this defense. Active athletes and active hands. Here's Mac Annis. Nice little step back. They're gonna call a jump ball. It'll stay Belmont ball. I didn't quite see why that was a call there, Coach. Did you? So it almost looks like a jump stop and the, and the defender's hand was on the on ball. The ball? If, the, if the ref was worried about a travel, maybe you call it a jump ball so you don't call the travel. Mm. But it seemed like a jump stop to me. Seemed a little bit like an early, early call there too. On the on the jump, correct. Naruzi long inbound to Mac Annis. Inside of two minutes here with ten on the shot clock. Naruzi, Preston Jackson Stevens head fake buys some space. <laughs> it would have been a really nice one if it fell, but Presto not able to find the mark, contorting his body through the oh, air there. I think he was surprised with how far he went left to right on that uh, horizontal jump there. <laughs> I told him he should do the long jump because he can leap. Marshant to DeRoss, DeRoss to Dean. Dean steps back inside to DeRoss. Good basketball there. Good post play by Colin DeRoss, but he can't convert. And the hand by Tim Sahagian is going to stop the break by Preston Jackson Stevens, and that's going to be. I believe the seventh team foul for Redding. And it's in just Belmont's DNA. As soon as they get a rebound, they're looking to push the ball. They're getting the ball from the paint out to the wings really, really quickly, heads up, and they're just looking to push and set the tempo. Gonna be the one and one here for Presto as Belmont's in the bonus. Presto converts with ease, he'll get another one. Redding Faithful offering their support of Preston Jackson Stevens as he nails two. 31-15 the score. And the Belmont crowd is up. Here's Dean. Looks inside, nothing there. Good defense by Naruzi. Three-pointer by Sahagian is good. 31-18. One minute, six seconds as a sarcastic cheer erupts from the Belmont Faithful. I'd call it a Bronx cheer, but I'm from Boston, so we'll call it a Somerville cheer, <laughs> or the Somerville salute. Minikazi. Over to Arno, who's seen some minutes. Good look inside to PJS. He was off balance there, too. What a finish by him. Great cut, and an amazing finish for, for uh, PJS as he was off balance there. Love seeing that connection persisting in the winter season. 30 seconds left. Belmont up by 15. Marshant to Dean. Arno on him. Great move there. Good recovery by Avery. Naruzi up with the board down low, beating the taller defender. Preston Jackson Stevens will walk it across. 15 seconds remain. Shot clock is off. Jacob Carter, excuse me. Tommy Carter backs up on PJS, uses the screen, up he goes, draws the contact. He'll go to the line for two, no smart play. No fear there, no fear there, going right at them. I'm a big PJS fan. Not just as a basketball player, but Great as a young kid. man. Great kid. And a hush falls over the winner. Reading Faithful again offering their support as Presto goes three for three from the line. Oh 
little Borat chair there. That was a Wayne's World reference. That was. I, no, come on. They don't know Wayne's World. Stacy, I don't own a gun. Let alone enough guns to facilitate a gun rack. Presto off the steal, tries with the three, can't convert. 35-18 the score. Belmont leads by 17 at the end of the first half. Coach, your thoughts on a great first half of basketball for the Belmont Marauders? 11 points by Redding in the first quarter, seven in the second quarter. And, and I think the things they were doing well at the end of that first quarter, going into the center, especially when Kevin Logan came out, they were unable to do that. Uh, in the second quarter, the the defense was tenacious. It was all over them. They were they were trying to settle down for the half court offense, and Belmont was unrelenting yeah. with their pressure, forcing bad passes, forcing turnovers, crashing every board, every shot contested. And I mean, obviously, you know Belmont's going to score. They've been scoring all year. You got to score against Belmont in in Reading was unable to do that, and that's why we have a 17-point lead. Yeah, I mean, I think it sounds like common sense, but the two things you really have to do to compete against this Belmont basketball team is match and scoring, right, and slow the pace of the Belmont offense and minimize possessions for them, and that's something that's not happening. And you have to make shots. As yep. soon as you miss a shot, Belmont gets the rebound. They're looking to push the ball. If you can make a shot, you slow it down, but, you know, it, it, it kind of feeds into itself that you're getting behind. You're out of your element, so you're trying to force a shot. You're trying to force a tempo. You're yep. trying to make a play. Because of that, you miss a shot, and Belmont capitalizes immediately. It's, 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 you know, you're playing against yourself when you do that, and, and Belmont executes. And, and protecting the ball. I mean, there's been a, a bunch of turnovers here by this Rocket team, and that's just feeding Belmont possessions, which 100%. is not a recipe for success. Getting the double thumbs up from Chet Golden Pipes Messer. Jeremy's got the camera on it. I'm skinny and fast. He's Coach Strait. We're going to be gone for the halftime break. We'll be back for the second half of Division II North MIAA State Tournament men's basketball action. And we're back for second half action here as Redding set to inbound in this 35-18 game. Belmont, of course, leading to start the third quarter as they take the floor. It was an eventful halftime. We learned there are no concessions here in this playoff game, so no pizza or uh, juju fruits or uh, Sour Patch Kids, Reese's Coach, Pieces, none of that. If Coach Q uh, leaves his post to attack a kid with a, for, for a slice of pizza, we hold no grudges. I'm going to be honest. I'm hangry right now. I, yeah. I am I am hangry. So like, I'm, I'm actively looking to see if anybody in front of us is snacking. Um, and they're not. There's no food here, which means that the security team up front is really doing their job denying food access. But we're going to try to make it happen. We also, you know, we talked a little bit about the environment, talked a little bit about coffee production. You know, very academic halftime here at Belmont High. One of the things uh, Chet informed us, our stat guru. Stat guru, Chet Messer. Four minutes left in the second corner. It was a 25-15 game, and Belmont closed out 15-3 to to end that half. Uh, sparked by a, a Mac 3 at the beginning there. But that's what Belmont could do to you. They put on the pressure. They could put, hit the shots, and just like that, a five-point lead turns into a, uh, you know, 15, lead. 15, 12-point lead. Nifty little reverse layup there by Preston Jackson Stevens. DeRoss, comma, Cullen over to Marchant. Nice on the dribble and a great jumper there by Tyler Marchant. This kid, 34, is a ball player. For sure, and it, he's getting to his spots. He's a mid range jumper from the elbows. Didn't know that existed in basketball anymore, but he's hitting his shots. Although in the second uh, quarter, they did a much better job contesting and not allowing him to get to his spot. Recovery defense by Belmont's been great. Here's Minikazi pulls up, trying to mimic it, and he does. Soft roll. Kid knows the, the rims here for sure. Coach Pritchard has Arno up at the scorer's table. Good look inside there to Dean. Great defense. Great help defense by Kevin Logan there. Smart basketball from the rangy sophomore, and he's available there to help Naruzi beat it. Back to Naruzi now as the Belmont offense resets. Naruzi will take it down. There's the kick out to Preston for three. It's up off the back iron. Rising up is Minikazi. Logan plays the tip. Annis to Minikazi. Inside to Preston Jackson. Stevens, and it's good. Nice pass by Minikazi there. Team basketball. 
Moving quickly is Redding. Here's Marshawn. He's their guy. Can't find the mark on the drive. It's going to be Belmont basketball. Liam Marshawn got to his spot, but there was a hand in his face there. Good defense by Naruzzi. Arno and Chapazian check into the game for Naruzzi and Kevin Logan as they'll get a blow. Mac Annis calling signals as he walks briskly across half court to Minikazi. Chapazian. Minikazi defended tightly. He's able to keep it. Chapazian. Dishes across to Minikazi. It's been a little bit sloppy. And a timeout, excuse me, timeout, smart timeout called by Coach Pritchard as he recognized the possession was getting a little bit dicey there. Yeah, I think Coach Pritchard had enough of that uh, passing to no one and no looking and just flinging the ball around. And that's a, you know, we talked about that in the first half, but that's a, that's utmost importance is to possess the ball, the handle the ball. And if Belmont's not going to do that, that would allow writing to get back into it. One, yep. of the, one of the things they do is they want to force you to make the bad decisions as long, and if they're making the right decisions, you can't <laughs> can't lose that way if you're Belmont. And, and I think when you watch this team, they play very fast, but they make the right decisions. They don't force things. And on that last possession, they were forcing some pretty suspect passes. <laughs> Smart basketball, definitely, you know, and, and basketball protecting basketball, you know, is really been one of the hallmarks, I think, of Coach Pritchard's tenure here, and I've only seen six years of it, but every Belmont team I've seen in the six years I've been here has been a smart, well-coached basketball team. For sure, especially this time of year. Giving all the credit there to Coach Pritchard and his staff, Tim Stratford, Bob Guidi, and Anthony Paolio. And Akazi with the hoop there. Stop and pop three there by number 20, Jacob Carter. They're calling Jacob Carter. I'm not sure who number 10 is if that's Jacob Carter. Mac Annis gets it back. He's trapped up. Going to be a jump ball. Stays Belmont basketball on the arrow, which of course will flip. You can see Coach Pritchard saying, too much dribbling, go to the rack. Annis, back to Shapazian. Shapazian dishes it out to Minikazi, open look for three, oh, it's good. Catch and shoot by Minikazi, perfect positioning. Knew exactly where he wanted to release from. Beautiful, beautiful catch and shoot. Middlesex League All-Star is Tim Minikazi. And I'll tell you, there's a kid who doesn't always get as much of the shine as some of the other guys on this team and is an absolutely integral component to Belmont basketball success. Well, that's what's so terrifying about this team, where you focus on Mac and then, you know, Preston Jackson Stevens has just had such a year this year. But steady throughout since freshman year has been Minikazi. Amen. And I mean, he can, you've seen it this game where he can drive, he can finish, he's hitting jumpers, he can hit threes. Um, we'll get the stats in a second. My guess is probably got about 12, 14 points already this Most game. Most definitely. And you're not even thinking about it. It's quietly done. It's, and he makes all the right plays, the right passes, the, the good defense. Preston with the deep three. 49-28 is the score as we head under 430. You know who he reminds me of is a little bit of a, of a faster, skinnier Paul Ramsey. Um, yes. Very unsung. Unsung. And, he, and Rammer was a big part of that, the, that Belmont team's success sure. as well. Shapazian to Minikazi. Right to the rack he goes. No, yeah. bat, no shot, foul on the floor. It's going to be a baseline inbounds pass for the Marauders. Just a gamer. For the most part, Minikazi doesn't get high, doesn't get low. Uh, it's funny once in a while when he starts when he starts yelling and getting frustrated, but very rare. And he's just so level-headed. And you can just see him, and he just makes the right plays time and time again. Gamer, for sure. Great play there by Minikazi. Almost did it. Arno almost had the tip back. Fighting down low is Avery Arno. And they're going to get a little bit froggy. They didn't really see too much wrong with that. Love seeing a quarterback mix it up in there. Thank you. 
Redding set to inbound here, 49 to 28. Belmont pressing. They'll pull off now as Arno picks up DeRoss. Switching there is Annis as he ends up on Carter. Good turnaround by DeRoss, but no touch really to finish nice it. Play there. Yeah, used his body perfectly, but just couldn't finish. Got the space he needed. He's been great on the block as Mac Annis knocks a three. You forget about it. You're worried about the cause than Annis. You're worried about Jackson Stevens, and it's just unbelievable these things. They're going to call a push off there on number 20, who I believe is Jacob Carter. He's frustrated imploring to his bench and we probably should have done some intel at halftime instead of look for a six foot side. I did some intel. I did some intel on a on a slice of pizza. So Carter will sit down in some frustration. Good job there by Coach Paul Morrissey for the Rockets to calm his guard down. But that's enough to rally the Belmont crowd wide open down low is Minikazi. That's going to be a Morrissey timeout. He had a few words for the officials there as he turned back to his team. 54-28, 3-14 remaining here in the third in this timeout. And Belmont's gotten a little bit explosive here in the third quarter. They're running away with this one, Coach. And what's interesting is that defensively, this has been their worst quarter so far. They've given up 10 points so far. They gave up 11 in the first quarter. There's still 3 minutes, 14 seconds left but you don't even notice that because the pace is so fast that they are just blowing right out of the building right now. And they've extended this almost to a 26-point lead right now. It's just unbelievable how quick they are to score and how lethal they are from everywhere. Redding's done a pretty good job at times of playing good basketball, getting guys open. And one of the things I noticed here, we saw it at the end there with Colin DeRoss, is that you know the, the finish is kind of missing a little bit. There have been a couple of you know turnaround post-block plays that you know need to be converted to hang in a tournament game. You can win games in the regular season and miss those, but in the tourney, it starts to hurt. And especially when, when Belmont's hitting everything and pressing you, I think you get you get taken out a little bit. You're worried about it, and it, it makes everything a little harder if you're not kind of in the zone or comfortable. And, um, yeah. and you feel like you have to hit every shot. The pressure becomes daunting when you're down this much. And Belmont, the clear favorite, obviously, here as the Belmont defense comes up, and Preston goes to the rack and takes the foul. He's down hard. And he's staying down right now. The Marauders go to pick him up. And this is a nervous moment. It was a hard push from behind as Preston was going to the rack. Yeah, I like going for the ball there. I like not giving up the play, but there was a lot of contact there for, for a pretty obvious breakaway there. And, and I think Coach Pritchard's arguing the point that that was a little more than just going for the ball there. There was a lot of contact there, and this is a very important key to this team. And uh, Unfortunately, Presto is up. That's definitely looks to me a little bit like a flagrant one situation, right? Clear path unimpeded to the basket. But Preston's a tough kid. He's fine. And he's up ready to shoot. And I mean, it's just the, we've talked about him just like what a good player he is, but what a good kid he is. Tommy Carter comes by, says something to him, and he just looks at him, gives him a thumbs up, saying, I'm all good. I'm all good. And see, there's no angst, no anger to the kid. He just loves playing ball, and he's very good at it. No, you don't see a lot of that. It was also uh, Colin DeRoss there, number 25, had a couple of words for Preston as he was walking in and out of the game. Water off a of duck's back, onward and upward he goes. He's ready to shoot his free throws, as that was a Paul Morrissey timeout for the Reading Rockets as I think he tries to stabilize the emotional energy of this team here a little bit in this 54 to 28 game. So yeah. a quick opportunity here though, coach. I mean, it's the end of the winter sports season. I mean, spring sports right around the corner. Spring sports right around the corner. It was 60 degrees today. It was, it was a beautiful I could, day. I, I, don't, I guarantee I will put, go to Vegas right now, I will put $100 that we're going to be three feet under, under yes, snow. Yes, sir. Snowstorm, On, probably. Uh, March 16th. Yep, at least two or three days before the start of the spring season, we'll get our traditional yeah, like clock, spring like, snowstorm. I, I told a couple baseball kids we should just start tryouts today. <laughs> <An> impromptu. <laughs> 
Presto going to the line here, 54-28. Hits his first one, does the lefty. Oh, it's unfortunate when you try to get a weak hand here, you chant going and you muffle it two times in. It's irony, I guess. Well, it's the irony of it there. I mean, you know, Presto needs the quiet to shoot. Belmont still continuing to press as Alex Dean has it knocked away by Preston Jackson Stevens. It was very cool there as Minicosi, uh, Arno, and Preston had him triple teamed. Arno immediately backed off looking for the outlet pass. It was just silent chemistry by the three defenders. Nice bounce pass inside from DeRoss to Marchant. Marchant will not be going away anytime soon. What a gamer that kid is got his space and he was uncontested there. Can hit that every time. I mean, looking at DeRoss, who's a captain too, and Marchant, also a senior captain, as Minikazi puts it in. You really see the scrappy leadership in this Reading team. I mean, they're a nine and nine team, 500 record. Drew Belmont here in the first round in the Middlesex League matchup as Arno draws the foul. They're not going away. I mean, they're balling right now. And we'll get some stats at some point, I'm sure, uh, end of the third quarter, but my, my guess is right now, Minikazi's team leader with about 18 points. And then Max right there, Preston's right there yeah. too. Again, we talked about the balance at the beginning, and it's a three-headed monster right now for Belmont. Definitely a bunch of guys in double digits there as the half-court trap is beaten by the Rockets. Marchant uses the DeRoss screen, pulls back again. Can't come up with the rebound. DeRoss gets the board but can't finish. Mac Annis, crossover, pull up, shots up, it's good. So smooth. And the finish is just a big part of it here for both the Reading Rockets and the Belmont Marauders. Here's DeRoss, he can't find the mark, no foul called. As they talk back and forth, Arno's gotten under his skin a little bit. Preston for three, it's short. Up with it is Shapazian. Shapazian looking inside, doesn't have the dribble, remembers it, over to Minikazi. Mac Annis slows it down, calling for motion. Here's Arno, works around PJS, working inside on DeRoss, up and in with the right hand, and it's good. And he's talking in DeRoss's face. Arno's fired up right now. You love it, and you love a team up this much, playing this hard. And they're going to get Arno on that foul. That's going to pull him to the bench as Pritch tells him to calm down a little bit. He's been real active with his hands. 62 to 30. One minute plus remaining here in the third quarter. Commanding performance by the Marauders here tonight. Good look inside. Can't finish his number 15, Harrigan. Belmont up with it. Annis to Preston for three. It's good. The crowd knew it before he even caught it. Hands went up as the pass to PSJ was going there. 35 BJS, points. PJS, 35 points to Belmont lead. There's the three by Redding air ball. Good finish there by Pat Harrigan. Belmont right back to the Rackles. Minikazi, the contact and the foul. Redding even scored on that possession, and Belmont immediately has to head up in their pushing tempo, and Minikazi had such a lane there, Redding fell asleep for half a second, and Belmont just capitalizes on you. They're so fast and so aggressive there. It's one of the things I love is that almost as soon as the balls hit the ground through the basket after the conversion, the team's back up the floor. And it's a mentality, it's a, you can't, you can, you can tell yourself that, but it's instinctual in Belmont, and obviously I'm sure Morrissey's talking about this in Reading, but it's just instinct, and Belmont has it and Reading doesn't right now. There's Marchant with a deep three, nice shot there by the captain, Taylor Marchant. 68-35, 33 points to Belmont lead, 15 seconds remain here in the third. Annis, PJS, Shapazian, Minikazi, and Carey on the floor to finish the third for the Marauders. Five seconds, Mac Annis for three, no good. Redding up with it, and that's going to be the horn to end the third. So if you thought the second quarter by Belmont was commanding, the third quarter was even more so. Call him General Patton, they're in control of this rush. 
Well, history reference there for you, I Coach. You, Coach. What do you think we got to see here? Is there a way back for the Rockets in the fourth quarter? No, absolutely not. <laughs> and, um, Let's try to create a little suspense you know, here, you know, not. for the for the production well, you, value. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you're saying too, the Rockets, uh, Rockets have a chance to have their uh, highest points against Belmont this season uh, if they get 10 more. But what's interesting, Rockets, again, we talked about 11 points for Redding in the first quarter, 7 in the second quarter. They had 17 in that quarter, and you're like, wow, you know, they're finally cracking this defense. Don't worry, Belmont had a resounding 33 points in the third quarter. Um, just, just, and that's the tempo aspect. They're allowing Redding getting a couple more shots in the quarter because the pace is so fast. They're getting down, they're getting shot. 33 points in the third quarter. They have 35 at halftime. That is just an unbelievable offensive performance by Belmont in that third quarter. But yeah, sorry to sorry to kill the viewership at home, Coach. Well, I'm just going to go home. You know, I, mean, I, I think at this point, you know, what, what are we doing here? I'm just going to... I might stop by Bob's Italian before it closes, get myself a three-foot sub. and Get the deluxe imported uh, Italian. Oh, it's so unreal. delicious. Although I got to say Monica Mercado's down at the North End is the best Italian sub in Boston. And I live in Medford, and I'm saying that. There's a good take down low. Mac Annis, benefit of the Tommy Ryder assist, uh, as Ryder seeing his first action. Where the, the wheels might come off the boat here for a second, but have you had more to Delahead in uh, Davis Square? I have, man. Um, I've had them both delivery and buy-in. Pretty solid. It's just I really like their Dude, Italian. I'm, I, you know, I like the prosciutto they use. They don't use mozzarella, and the bread's so nice. But what? again, wheels be coming off the boat. <laughs> what a feed there to... Excuse me, Preston Jackson Stevens from Minnecause, 72 to 37. Their chemistry has been unbelievable. We called it early on in this the game. Ross is inside, can't finish. He's struggled around the hoop all night. Preston Jackson bounce pass behind the back from Annis. And that is what that they call a dime. That is silly. Marshawn, there's the deep three from Carter. No good off the front rim. Shapazian up with it. Long pass to Annis. Annis looks inside to Ryder, pulls it back up, thinks the better of it. Shapazian, Minikazi. He's taking the three from the top of the key, rattles around and falls off the front rim. Marshawn up with it for Redding. Picks his dribble up, up top to Carter. We think. Marshawn for three, no good. Uncontested rebound there for Redding by a, Dan Damari. That was the first time all night there was in a box out. That was the first time all night that uh, Belmont was kind of asleep on the rebounds. Three guys there, nobody put a body there. I love it. A 30-plus point lead, and Coach Pritchard is up and coaching. Here's Shapazian. PJS calling for motion is Coach Pritchard. Annis will slow it down. Seven seconds, six seconds, step back. There's Ryder, stops and pops, it's good! Tommy Ryder with his first points of the night off the bench. The warm the buses chant starts up. There's PJS, good board there. He'll slow the rush down. And what's great about well-coached teams, and obviously we've seen this Belmont team a lot, and, and they are very well-coached, is when the kind of the deeper bench players get in and they have the opportunity to play, the expectations are just as high as the starters. It's a, it's a system, and you're not only building for your next opportunity, you're building for the future here, and this is good playing time that a lot of these players are going to yep. get. But Coach Pritchard will not allow bad play. He, will, he wants him to play the right way, wants him to run the right offense. And you'll see that, that these depth players, these uh, deeper on the bench players, they're going to have the expectations on them just as high as Mack, as Minikazi, as Preston Jackson Stevens has had. And that's a testament of a really, really well coached team. Watching, uh, you know, we, we work out up here in our offseason, so we get a lot of opportunity to watch the Belmont boys team practice, girls team too. And, you know, it, it, it's really a, a watching Coach Pritch and Coach Strafford and his assistant coaches drill the system. 
you know, and that's really what you see the benefit of when these young guys come off the bench and are able to hop right into the system and run it. We're going to see it now as we get wholesale substitutions on both sides as Redding is essentially playing their youngsters. They've rested their starters and conceded the game, and Coach Pritch matches that and puts his twos into the game as well. Cole Tully for three for Redding. Although Cole off the bench is a senior forward. Here's Jojo Stefano to Tommy Ryder. Ryder out to Joe Carey. Carey called for the travel. Walked before he bounced. And you can see Coach Pritchard right now giving him instruction and coaching them up. They weren't selling there. They were running an offense. They're running the system. They're up 30 points here in the fourth quarter. Four minutes left in the game. You know, spoiler alert, Belmont's going to win, but uh, they're still running it the right way. Here's Tommy Ryder takes the contact, no call. Joe Carey kicks it out to DeStefano, rattles around, can't convert. That's got to stay Belmont, there it is. That was Sohail Hajri coming over the top. And here comes Matt McHugh. That's it, that's all I got. That's his name. You did great. Thank you. Matt McHugh, also a Belmont football captain, gets his points on the putback. And a lacrosse phenom, we like to call him. Mm -hmm. Football phenom first, but you know, that's no, okay. I said it first, I said no, phenom I before you said Gino. No, Matt's a great athlete. He is a great athlete. I'm excited to see him play lax. Me too. You know me, I'm a lax guy. Jesse Doherty oh, for Reddick. So Has it swatted away by Hajri. Here's Jojo Stefano with the left. Nice finish. That's a good name. Jojo Stefano. He was in double figures last time Redding and Belmont played. Redding shot there by Matt Blasey. Doesn't convert. Deep three there once again by Cole Tully is good. Kind of has you wondering where this kid's been all game. Number five, the senior with back-to-back -back threes for the Rockets. Good take there. So, so Hale. Nice bump. battle down low. No call. And McHugh right there on the ball. Here's Jesse Doherty, picked up by McHugh, spits to the corner, shots no good. That's going to draw some raspberries from the Belmont faithful. To Stefano, kicks it out to Gian Gregorio for three, and it's good. And the pace is the same. They're catching it and they're pushing it, just like we've seen all game. 83 to 45. Morrissey calling a timeout to get some quick subs in. Tommy Ryder will sit down. The freshman Colin Galloway now entering the game. Youngster. The Love future to see the is here. Almost got a steal right there, too, playing in the paint. A deep three there by Adam DiNapoli is no good. Redding's up with it. Here's Cole Tully to DiNapoli to Doherty. Nice passing there by the Rockets. Doherty to DiNapoli. Shots up, no good. Sahail Hajri up with it. And here's Galloway carrying the freshman. He's tall. McHugh. Gian Gregorio looking inside to Galloway. Good pick up there. Sahail back up top. Picks the dribble up as Gian Gregorio. Jojo DeStefano with the Florida and the touch. And again, very patient offense there by Belmont. A good attack by JD right there. 40 points to lead with a minute 30 remaining. Good look inside there. Big Matt Blasey can't come up with it. And we're going to see our first action of the night for a non-rostered player. I believe that's Caleb Malcolmson. It is. Big number 41 checks in. Here's DeStefano to McHugh. Working the ball around the top. To Stefano off of the screen by Malcolmson. Shots good. He is feeling it now. Uh, he's three for three in Spanish. That's trace for trace. 
multilingual. Doherty now tripped up by the blast. He screen is to Stefano, but it was a clean screen. He can't convert, tries to go back up with it. Foul to go to the line. 53.7 seconds remain, and it's a 42 Belmont lead. Matt Blasi, two shots. Blasi shoots his first, no good. Big boy there is number 14, Matt Blasi. Class of 2021 would make him a junior. Oh, you're mad for some point tonight, coach. He must be a mathologist. Math, ma math magician is the technical term. Up top, Gian Gregorio to McHugh. Inside to Malcolmson, up with the right hand off the backboard, no good. Ball kicks around, so Hale goes over the top to the floor. They're gonna call him for the foul on that one. It's absolutely the rules of the game. Yep, cannot be jumping on players. Nope, nope. they frown on that. Dr. Naismith frowned on that. The Belmont faithful wishing a pleasant goodbye to the Reading Rockets as we close inside 30 seconds here. There's Tommy Ryder. Blasi, Darty up top, shots no good. Hajri with the rebound, can't get rid of it, has it knocked away, Belmont ball. 12.8 seconds remaining, dragging this one out. This will likely be the last trip up the floor for the Marauders. He flows inside 10 seconds. The Stefano is being pressured by Doherty, so he's going to have to move. Malcolmson sets the screen. Gian Gregorio will hold the ball, and that's the game. Belmont advances out of the first round of the Division II North 2020 MIAA Boys Basketball Bracket with a victory of the tune of 87 to 45 against the 14 ranked Reading Rockets looking right now that Belmont now will see the winner of Bill Rick a Somerville. That's being played tonight at 7 p.m. as well. So we're gonna have to hop on the Twitter machine and see what the score of that is. Coach, your thoughts on what was a dominant, dominant Belmont victory. And they, they did it at both ends. And you know, we, we said that uh, you know, they, Belmont, uh, sorry, Belmont, um, Redding got a 45. That was the most points they've scored all year against Belmont. They scored 42, 44, 45, but it's not a whole lot. And, um, you know, Belmont executed offensively. They off executed defensively. Only allowed 10 points in the fourth quarter by Redding. It was defense. It was offense. It was the press. It was everything. And Belmont, it was a total, complete win. And they were dominant. They were absolutely dominant. Um, especially in that third quarter when they put up 33 points. I mean, that was an outstanding quarter by that. It was. It was a really, really impressive performance by the Marauders, you know, and I definitely think that they they were able to play their game tonight. You know, they were able to run. They were able to catch and shoot. You referenced it a bunch of times, Coach, how good they are at that. Shared the basketball. Motion offense was working, spinning it around the top of the key and a you, lot. You saw that when the, uh, the players at the end, when the, the bench kids yep. they're running the same thing same with the same offense. patience. Same offense over and over again. Their test is going to come a little bit in the later rounds. You know, no disrespect to Reading, they're a gutsy team, they're a good basketball team. They were a nine and nine team at the bottom of the bracket. You know, you got Beverly at 18 and two, Latin Academy at 19 and four, Burlington 16 and four, Winchester 15 and five. And on the other side, you got Tech Boston sitting right there. They're Don't forget those guys. They're 10 seed to the South. Yep. They're 10 seed to the South, but they, you know, you would expect them to come out. They did the last two years. Sure did. And. Um, passionate you know, fan base. This is a team, and Belmont's a team with aspirations for the Garden again, and they have actually bigger aspirations this year. Amen. And the way they're playing, you can see why they believe that, and you can see that, you know, obviously in, in basketball in the tournament, upsets happen. We're not quite in March, but yep. it'll be coming soon enough. But this is a team that has the depth. They have the, uh, the, the ability, and obviously the chemistry we saw tonight to yep. make a real, real deep run this year. And the Matt, Matt McHugh dunk show is underway here. As I know, he's, try, he's trying to get the court cleared. He's trying to get, hey, guys, this is my time to shine. This is where, this is what I got out of bed No, he's, he's waiting for, I'm waiting to see it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's... it's I'm waiting for yeah, all these no, guys to get out of the way. I was like, guys, come guys, on. Guys, get out of the way. I got to do my thing. This is showtime. All right, tonight. here it is. Hoping that he's not going to... Oh, yeah, he's, he's just getting, a lot of traffic there going on. It's just a lot of it traffic. It needs to be organized. Here, here it is. It's not bad, coach. Not bad. That's a left-handed side reverse side dunk. Side reverse dunk off of the shot bounce. Off of like, the bounce. Pretty solid. In traffic, trying to not land on someone. Oh, here we go. He does have. Nah, he didn't get up on that one. He was a little bit. He was a little bit no, uh, no. not as froggy as he needed to be. No, I mean, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see. I'm excited for this Belmont team just because, for me, you know, it's it's a team that is so rooted in team chemistry. Yes. And it is so rooted in, in lots of different people doing lots of different things. And, you know, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for that. That's kind of what our football team has been, you know, not a, you know all the way to the finals or anything like that. But that's kind of what we've been in the last couple of years, too. So. Well, you've had classes of really talented players that you graduated, and it's not a rebuild, it's a reload situation. It's just a reload. And that's what, you know, you graduated your all-time winning scorer last year, yep. and they don't miss a beat, and they might be in some ways a more complete team. Yeah, trying, you know, trying really hard to, to, to rep the system. And you see that in Coach Pritch, so that when, when you know, a guy like Danny Y leaves your program, obviously there's going to be a hole. But it's a fillable hole, you know, and, and they filled it. You know, you're not going to fill it with the same player. You're going to fill it with something else. And, and that's what Coach Pritchard and his team has been so, so adept at. Uh, are we going to come back again? Are you gonna, what I'm are you in. thinking? I'm in. you got to talk to the boss. Yeah, my boss, I think I think I got, uh, I got a couple vacation days. I'll be good. All right, it's Chet Messer, the Golden Pipe, standing next to me. Thank you so much. He says, you know it's tourney time because Coach Q says, shows up to call the game. Chet's been here every single Belmont basketball game the entire way through the season filming, even when Jeremy couldn't make it to film. So I want to give a big shout-out to Chet for all he's done to support Belmont basketball. Jeremy Meserve, our director, all the good folks over at BFC. Coach Josh Streit to my left. I'm Coach Jan Kuman. That's one. Three more. And that's what we're hoping we're calling from atop the rafters at the Garden once again this year. Signing off for the BHS Sports TV Network. <laughs>